I feel like the motor is locked up at this point, so I'm not sure. Um, it was odd once it built oil pressure, you know, things just seemed to have locked up. And um, that was that. Welcome back to the infamous project guys and you're in for something a little bit different today and I have been immersed in my 2000 SVT Lightning. This truck has been down for probably about a year now. I uh, had it up in Canada as you know I shipped it over from back. I bought the truck back, shipped it over to the US from Dubai, drove it up to um, Foxtoberfest 2018 and from there proceeded home to Canada truck was up there and then managed to get the truck trailer down with my parents um, who were coming down to Texas to visit and um, they uh, got the truck here dropped it off to my friend Charles and he was driving it around and well he broke some shit so <laughs> it wasn't his fault so what happened? Well, he was driving along and all of a sudden um, lost all the accessories, heard some noises and uh, proceeded to stop to find out that the tensioner pulley, which there is a new one right here, um, this let loose and it put a hole in the factory timing cover. So needless to say, the timing cover had to come off and uh, get replaced. Luckily, um, there was no internal damage. Uh, if you look at the chain tensioner rails here, uh, it's this one. You can see where the, uh, where the pulley actually started chewing into uh, the side of that. So these guys got changed. Um, the task was a little bit beyond his normal comfort levels, but he tried to do the job. So kudos to him, um, him and his brother-in-law wrenched at it, went away and trying to get it done. And when he pulled off the hydraulic tensioner, um, things rotated a little bit on him and therefore most likely threw the timing off. Long story short, they put everything back together and uh, the truck wouldn't fire. So here I am back, new shop, truck's been sitting here and I've got everything else apart or everything apart again that they took off with the exception now I've got the valve covers off so that I could get to the timing marks on the gears. So I've been going through cleaning everything up. I actually I installed a brand new, uh, oil pump down there, uh, managed to do it without uh, dropping the pan or anything. Just uh, you got to be a little creative with the box side of your uh, eight millimeter wrench and um, get the pickup tube off and then everything from there is pretty straightforward. So I've gone ahead and done a lot of marking on um, the timing gears and sprockets so that I know, and on the chains, so that I know where things need to line up. Uh, I actually had an extra set of chains um, laying around just as reference. It was really hard to see the marks, um, but managed to get um, everything marked and ready to go. So the procedure that I'm gonna follow, um, I saw a video, I actually watched it twice, uh, Ford, Canic, Ford Mechanic, Mykonos, Mykonos, I'm thinking of a Greece island, but it's something like that. Anyway, super informative, great video, and I'm just going to be doing exactly his procedure. In fact, I've already started, so everything in terms of the way that I've taken everything off is exactly in his video. So now it's time to um, rotate things to top dead center. I'm doing this without the Ford tools. I'm doing this with um, basic hand tools and visualization um here in the garage so the basic steps is that with that keyway on the crank pulley down there facing at 12 o'clock i'm going to rotate this cam gear to 12 o'clock that cam gear will be at 11 o'clock once those two guys are in place 
Then I'm going to rotate the crankshaft around 11 o'clock. And instead of using the top dead center tool, um, I'm actually going to follow his instruction where the timing mark on the sprocket points down at six o'clock. And you can see the keyway is at about 11 o'clock there. But when that guy's at six o'clock, that's your top dead center. So we'll find top dead center, run the chains, make sure that our links line up on the marks with the sprockets and um, hopefully everything is going to go back together and this thing can be back on the road again um, super pain in the ass pulling the coil packs and everything off um, i just had the truck fully gone through at um, la mata performance down in um, i think it's a winter garden somewhere just outside of orlando um, went through everything, but I guess tensioner pulley overlooked, unfortunately. Um, so kind of sucks to go through, but you know what? It's a learning experience. This is the first time that I've been messing around on a mod motor as well, but, um, whatever. Sometimes you just got to, uh, jump in and learn. And if the motor doesn't fire, if for whatever reason things jumped and maybe, um, we got piston or valve damage. Uh, I don't think we do, but in case I don't get it right and it does, or it could just be the high miles. This thing is ready to turn 180,000 miles. So worst case scenario, these bins down here that you see, this is um, full components that was from a DSS built motor that actually came in my friend Lewis's Sonic Blue Lightning before that motor blew up. Um, so these are all those parts. So I have everything from rods, pistons, heads, cams, you name it, ready to do another build. I just rather do that on my own time instead of my truck being down and not being able to enjoy it. You can actually see the lower pulley that was on that bolt motor. I sent a picture to my friend. I'm like, should I just put this on and send it? But um, anyways, that's what we got. Um, in fact, this aluminum upper intake and this kenny bell were actually on that built motor i went ahead and bolted these guys on because that was easy enough um, when i've got all the parts so that i had all done when i was in dubai um, also bolted on the long tubes and the other cap back so here we are going to uh, put this guy back together see if it will fire once again all right guys so the driver's side is on can see got the chain guides tensioners all that there you can see down here the timing mark of this link and I even put paint on that tooth so you can tell that that guy would go right into that tooth which is perfect and then we have these two links straddling this timing mark here so we did have to rotate the um, cam probably well, from 12 o'clock over to about 11. That took out some of the slack in the bottom side of the chain, which allowed us to put all the tensioning hardware on. So don't judge me, I am using vice grips to hold the camshaft in place to keep it from, uh, from moving on me and slipping. Again, this motor's got almost 200,000 miles on it, so those vice grips aren't gonna hurt anything. You can get a special tool that will clamp and hold the camshaft in place. <laughs> Right, guys there you have it both sides installed got the uh, bottom side tight this was the loose side with the tensioner opposite on this side had the chain tight here and then uh, got our tensioner stuff on mark in between the two links mark in between the two links that one's hard to see and then everything is lined up down on the bottom so Looks like everything is good to go. Just like in the video, I'm gonna make sure I don't forget this guy. On his video, it was stamped front. This one's actually stamped rear. So slide this on like this. There we go. 
Already got our surfaces all cleaned up, so we'll be putting some gasket maker on the T-junctions down by the oil pan down there, and uh, I'll be able to get this timing cover back on. And from there, get our valve covers back on, get the coil packs back in, wiring button back up, and um, get ready for a test fire. Here we are, it's the next day. I wasn't gonna bore you with putting all this thing back together. Um, if I could summarize it, I'd just say it sucks or it sucked. Um, I don't know if I'd want to do all this again. Like <laughs> it's cool because it's the first time that I've gone through and done it all on a mod motor. It'll be even cooler if the truck starts. Um, now, if it doesn't or there's any other issue, then that's it. Um, the truck is going to be retired until I can get the motor rebuilt and use a whole bunch of those parts that are in those bins over there. But for now, I've bolted everything back on. Just stupid stuff. Getting the valve covers back on sucks just to push all the wiring and everything out of the way in that back corner. You know, I didn't want to disconnect any of the AC lines or any of that stuff. I was, again, following all of the instructions that I saw in that video. So everything is in a position where I should be able to see if the truck is gonna fire. I haven't put my pulley bridge on um, or any of the belts or any of that stuff, um, but it should be in a position to run the way that it is. I didn't wanna go through all of that and putting the clutch fan back on and all of those things if the truck ultimately isn't going to fire. So because I changed the oil pump and because this truck hasn't run in a while, I've left the crank sensor disconnected. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the battery and um, we'll crank the truck over until we hopefully see some oil pressure. Well, there we are, no dice. So I'm not sure what happened. Um, I feel like the motor is locked up at this point. So I'm not sure. Um, it was odd once it built oil pressure, you know, things just seemed to have locked up. And um, that was that. So not sure. What else could have gone wrong? Everything was pretty straightforward, but that's it. I'm gonna go back, watch this footage, and um, see what the deal is, but I think this truck is ready for another motor. So, you know, a couple days of work, and uh, had high hopes and expectations I'd be driving this thing, but it is not looking that way. So, there you have it, guys. Unfortunate chain of events. Lightning won't be running anytime soon. I had a beer, I had a chance to relax a little bit, and of course, a friend of mine was like, can you rotate it by hand, and I could go counterclockwise, almost a rotation, and then it would stop, I could go back clockwise again, a rotation, and then it would stop, so I decided to uh, pull the plugs. So here is cylinder number six. Not looking so hot. And um, this plug was soaked when, uh, when I took it out. Soaked in coolant. I don't know if you can see that down there, but this cylinder is uh, full of liquid, which uh, not a good sign. Maybe I should have pulled the plugs out instead of wasting all my time doing the timing cover. Um, anyways, I'm going to blow it out with some compressed air and see. I'm going to grab some of the other plugs out and uh, we'll go from there, see what's going on. All right, guys, so I took out cylinder spark plug number seven and um, it as well was wet inside the cylinder. It didn't look like coolant, just looked wet. Um, which plug it was the electrode was fine um, so I got over to cylinder 8 
And um, this is how tight the spark plug was. So, not sure what's going on. It didn't blow the plug, because the plug is still threaded in there, but it was loose. So going back to why didn't I pull the plugs and check them, um, you know, when I did this whole timing cover procedure, um, I guess shame on me, never assume anything. But the reality is this truck saw a drive from Florida to Toronto, and that was pretty much it. And because in Florida, it had a major service. Like, I mean, plugs, coil packs, it even got tuned. Um, I, I have receipts for a lot of work that was done. Um, and funny enough, the guy that had my truck before in Florida didn't want to work on it. And he told my friend Lewis that the motor was blown. So my friend was just like, what does he know? He didn't really say how he knew. He was just like, I oh, know yeah, I don't want to work on it. Maybe because the truck has really high miles. That's why he didn't want to touch it. So then I took the truck to a trusted shop in Florida and they said, no, the motor's fine. Um, it actually had a larger lower pulley on it. Um, they dyno tuned it, didn't have enough fuel because it's still the stock injectors and everything else. So um, put the stock lower pulley back on it. Um, everything was gone over except for the tensioner pulley um, and the radiator actually. Uh, the radiator ended up cracking um, at the top here on the way to Foxtoberfest. So um, got a new rad put in. So anyways, long story short, the truck maybe saw 2,000 miles since the plugs were done. So my assumption were all the plugs were fine. And the ones that I've taken out, um, they are in, uh, in fact good shape. So um, why there's some, uh, why did I find a little bit of coolant in, uh, in cylinder number six though? That's a big uh, question mark. Clearly there's a head gasket issue. So. I'm going to go ahead and pull the, uh, the plugs out of the other side. Then I want to see if the motor will, uh, will turn over. And if it will, maybe because of the liquid in the cylinders, maybe it's hydrolocked. Um, and I want to see it run regardless. If I can get it running, then great. The plugs are out on the uh, passenger side of the truck and um, everything's looking normal over here. Yeah, a little rusty in there. Probably some water sitting in the uh, in the galley where the spark plugs are, since they're so far down in there. But these ones are all good. Um, gonna go ahead now and try and rotate the motor by hand and see if uh, got any changes here. Really need to work on the lighting situation in here. Yeah, see, that's still dead stop. So we can go back. To right there, and boom, that's it. Something is not happy.